just soft enough to be shoved down your greasy fucking pirate throat without tearing a hole. Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering and operations to emergency response. Don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be looking at another heavily requested Sam Onella video called Why It Sucked to Be a Pirate. I've noticed a lot of comments about really appreciating all of the lovely segues between nuclear power and literally any one of Sam's topics, so <laughs> let's give this one a whirl. Hey, little Jimmy. Yeah, what's up? Do you like Pirates <laughs> of the voice. Caribbean? Yeah, it's all right. So do you think it'd be fun to be a pirate? Yeah. Well, guess what? You couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, I know. At some point, every kid has dreamed about being a swashbuckle and corn shuckle and wife cuckle and cocksuckle and pirate. <laughs> but trust me when I say, it was really not all it's cracked up to be. Mm. First, we'll talk about the food. So one staple of the pirate diet was salted meat, usually wild oxen or pork. Yeah. And Didn't I love jerky as much then. as the next guy, but this wasn't like a bag of Jack Links. In fact, it was probably closer in texture to your shoes than any meat you've ever eaten. In those days, you couldn't just snap into a Slim Jim. That's a modern luxury that we take for granted. Back then, the slogan was, gnaw on a Slim Jim for minutes on end, grinding it between your molars while the gallons of salt turn your mouth mm, into a desert no. until the mangled hunk of flesh in your mouth is just soft enough to be shoved down your greasy fucking pirate throat without tearing a hole. Another essential food item was known that as hardtack. Awesome. This was essentially just flour oh. and water baked into a cracker like Heard of this. Beyond the fact that it was totally flavorless, hardtack was also extremely dense, to the point where pirates would often have to slam their fists down on it in order to break it into pieces small enough to fit in their mouth. As long as it was kept dry, hardtack almost never spoiled, although it often became infested Ooh. with weevils. Um, excuse me, sir? I'm a vegan, so like, can I have a new piece? <laughs> One without any of Mother Nature's beautiful creatures in it? Thanks. Wait a minute, is this gluten free? Fifth better hemp rope. Nah, but the weevils didn't make you sick or change the taste all that much, so, and this is true, the crew would just eat it in the dark, so that way they couldn't tell if they were eating a normal chunk or a weevily one. Then there's the crowding. Oh. So yeah, don't think nuclear power existed much in these sort of pirate days. I think back in the 1700s, if you were to ask them about splitting atoms, assuming they even knew what it was, they would have probably tried using really small hammers. So pirate ships typically packed in as many crew members as possible, because more pirates means more manpower when you go to board an enemy ship. Of course, the downside to that is that you're basically like a bunch of hairy, unwashed sardines. Yeah. Let me illustrate what a typical night below deck was like. Oh, so no. you're sprawled out on the damp, musty wood floor. Everything's pitch black, you can't see a thing. The smell of the filth and the mold forces you to only breathe through your mouth. Suddenly, your left hand feels wet, probably just seawater leaking through the hull. You sniff your hand, nope. No, that's piss. You feel something furry rub up against your elbow. It was either the body of a diseased rat or the beard of your diseased crewmate. Either way, that's probably where the piss came from. Some guy's moaning loudly no. in the next room. Hopefully he's just jerking off, because if he's dying, that's one more body to deal with in the, the morning. Infection. Rinse and repeat for eight hours, and then it's daytime. The poor diet and cramped conditions led to disease being a huge problem aboard pirate ships. The most well-known of these diseases is scurvy, where you don't get enough yeah. vitamin C. When scurvy first begins, you just kind of feel tired all the time, no big deal. Then you get weird spots on your skin and your gums start bleeding. Uh. This progresses until all your teeth fall out and all of your body's mucous membranes start gushing blood and pus, causing you to die. So that's a lot of fun. There were tons that's of other horrific. diseases too. I what is this? <laughs> really dick rot? Two, well, two types of it and then sniffles. Rotten junk. Uh, wow. You know what? Not, not surprised. Go through them all, but here's a few honorable mentions. Also, some people say that alcoholism is a disease. I might just be disturbed, but that's one sickness I could definitely get down with. If it is a disease, then yeah, just about every pirate had this one. Piracy? That's not really something that we had to worry about, that we've ever really worried about, at least in civilian um, nuclear. Even the other kind of piracy being the, uh, the digital piracy, people stealing your, uh, your secrets or whatever. And part of it is the technology is just so old. It's like you can't really do much hacking to a uh, technology that uses old orange plasma screens from the 1970s and stuff. I mean, we do have strict cybersecurity measures in place from that type of piracy and theft, but a lot of it is there's not really a whole lot you can do to something that isn't connected to the internet and physical access. You have to go through 
an armed security force. The other side of it, the military and weapons side, completely different story, all kinds of espionage and piracy and theft of designs like that through during the Cold War um, on both sides, both the uh, US side and the Soviet side, uh, stealing of nuclear weapons and other there were spies with during you know the Manhattan Project and theft of various nuclear weapons designs. It's a more recent example would be with um, Iran taking designs for uh, for nuclear weapons. Uh, clearly, and more recently, we know Iran's been involved in nu nuclear espionage. Um, one way you can tell right away is. They have enrichment facilities, and they're so massive because you can't really hide them, that enrich uranium upwards of 80%. No civilian or peaceful purposes requires that high of an enrichment as civilian nuclear reactors at best are 5 to 6% most in the, in, in the 2 to 4% range for, uh, for light water reactors anyway. So kind of obvious, <laughs> kind of obvious what they're doing there. If anything, though, I'd call that one of the few upsides of pirate life. Finally, there's the combat. So you've gone through all these disgusting, horrible living conditions, but at least you can enjoy the thrill of battle, right? Swinging from rope to rope, sword in your mm. mouth, long, intense saber duels, that kind I of thing. I wonder about this. But that's typically not how it went down. For one thing, when pirates boarded a ship, nine times out of ten, they'd just surrender immediately. Because what are a bunch of well-groomed merchants going to do against a horde of disgusting barbarians? If the defending ship did decide to fight back, though, the resulting brawl wouldn't be anything like the movies. It'd be way worse, like immediate R rating. Because pirates rely <laughs> a lot battle. on brutality, both because they don't have much real training, and because it scares the shit out of people. If you were a deckhand on an invaded ship, and you were stupid enough to fight back, you wouldn't be dancing around doing flips and shit none of that. Instead, they'd probably shoot you in the stomach with a flintlock pistol, kick you to the ground, chop off your shoulder blade with a hand axe, gouge out your eyes with a marlin spike, that's wind your intestines brutal. around the prow, and then toss your twitching body overboard. And that's only a slight exaggeration. Drawing, Honestly, though, if Jack blood. Sparrow got attacked by actual pirates, he wouldn't last a second. It's kind of like a used car salesman going to prison, like, I'll be fine. If anybody tries intimidating me, I can get out of it with my quick wit and charming personality. Boy, you look real pretty from behind. Oh, no. oh wow. I'm boned. So yeah, in short, if you're thinking about pulling a Captain Phillips anytime soon, I'd advise against it. That's all for today. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and thank you for watching. Yeah, it's interesting how like the Pirates of the Caribbean movies almost romanticize the whole pirate life and all the... And there's so many, like... Are I, I, we even seeing pirate... Uh, pirates in like the Spongebob movie how they're all just a bunch of goofy guys but nah they're brutal and ruthless just like pirates today and it's another one of those things kind of taking a shot of people's childhood for people that want to pretend to be pirates or ninjas or what have you and then you realize how brutal these people actually are thank you very much for watching I'll see you next time